Hello everyone. I welcome you all to my daily dose. So I am myself Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am the general medicine educator. So as a part of today's daily dose, let me show you the clinical question. So the question is, 60 year old woman presents to her general practitioner with a two months history of lethargy and weakness. And she mentions that she is finding it increasingly difficult to climb the stairs and do not uh, and is, she is unable to do the housework. And on examination there is wasting and weakness of the proximal muscles in upper and lower limbs. What is the most likely diagnosis? The options are dermatomyositis, polymyositis, polymyalgia rheumatica, Kawasaki's disease and polyarthritis nodosa. Now, I'll just tell you how to rule out the other options and come to a conclusion of the final answer. Now, you see the clinical scenario, 60 year female patient, right? And two months history of lethargy and weakness and she is having difficulty to climb the stairs. And she is also having wasting in the proximal muscles. See, one important point that you should remember here is she is unable to climb the stairs. Now, what are the muscles which are required for climbing the stairs? The proximal muscles of the lower limb are the one which are required for climbing the stairs. And on examination, what is that you are having? You are having the weakness of the proximal muscles in the upper end as well as the lower limb. So, the basic clinical point says 60 year female, proximal muscle weakness is there, right? That is a conclusion. Now, in the options given to you, in which all clinical conditions you have the proximal muscle weakness, let me tell you. In dermatomyositis, yes, you will have proximal muscle weakness. Polymyositis, yes, you will have proximal muscle weakness. Polymyalgia rheumatica, yes, you will have proximal muscle weakness. The shoulder girdle and as well as hip girdle, there will be weakness and as well as the pain. Kawasaki disease, you will not have proximal muscle weakness. And uh, polyarthritis nodosa also, there is no proximal muscle weakness. So here itself, we can rule out these two options, your Kawasaki disease and as well as the polyarthritis nodosa are ruled out. Now we have three options left with us to make out the answer and to come to a conclusion. And let me tell you, in this particular question, the answer is the polymyositis. I'm sorry, it is not dermatomyositis, it is the polymyositis. Alright, now why it is polymyositis, why not dermatomyositis or why not polymyalgia rheumatica because in all the three conditions you have proximal muscle weakness. Now why is it polymyositis, first let me tell you here. See polymyositis is what, it is an autoimmune disorder where there will be inflammation of the skeletal muscles and particularly the proximal muscles. The proximal muscles of the upper limb and as well as the lower limb, they are very commonly affected in patients with the polymyositis. And the other very important point is the females, they are more commonly affected than males in this particular clinical scenario of the polymyositis. And in polymyositis, you will have a very short history. Like what is the history of this particular patient? This particular patient, it's a two month history. Right? So, the onset usually occurs over a period of months and may include systemic features such as lethargy and as well as the weight loss. See, these are the other manifestations in patients with the polymyositis. Right? Now, in these patients with the polymyositis, I said you that there will be proximal muscle weakness. So, there will be weakness of the shoulder girdle and there will be also weakness of the pelvic girdle. Right? And after the involvement of the proximal muscles, that is the shoulder girdle and as well as the hip girdle or the pelvic girdle, there will be also involvement of the other muscles. What are those other muscles? There will be involvement of pharyngeal muscles. And because of the involvement of the pharyngeal muscles, the individual will have difficulty in swallowing, that is they will have dysphagia. And there is also involvement of laryngeal muscles and because of the involvement of the laryngeal muscles, the individual will have the hoarseness of voice. Why? Because the voice production does not occur properly. And in the last, in these patients with the polymyositis or dermatomyositis, there will be involvement of your respiratory muscles. So once there is involvement of respiratory muscles, the individual will land up in type 2 respiratory failure. Right? The individual will land up in type 2 respiratory failure. Now, the question is, like why it is not dermatomyositis, why is it the polymyositis? In patients with the dermatomyositis, as the word itself tells you, there should also be presence of the skin manifestations. 
but if you take the clinical history or if you see the examination of this particular individual the skin manifestations are not there so that is the reason why your dermatomyositis is ruled out now the question comes what are those particular skin manifestations what you will see in patients with the dermatomyositis number one over the eyelids you will have a particular rash this is called as the heliotrope rash right this is what is called as heliotrope rash that is one of the dermatological manifestation in dermatomyositis and the other one is the presence of the gotrans papules you see this these are your gotrans papules and where do you observe this particular gotrans papules you will see this over the knuckles elbows and as well as over the knees these are the gotrans papules then there will be also presence of the macular rash right where exactly over the back and as well as the shoulder and that will result in what is called as the shawl sign right that will result in what is called as the shawl sign okay so shawl sign is another important dermatological manifestation in dermatomyositis and the last one is the presence of the mechanics hand like where you will have painful cracking over the tips of the fingers okay so these are the dermatological manifestations so to revise again one is your the heliotrope rash second the gotrans papules third the presence of the shawl sign and next the mechanic hand now this particular dermatological manifestations are not there in your patient so that is the reason why dermatomyositis is ruled out next you take the other options like polymyalgia rheumatica now in case of polymyalgia rheumatica also there will be proximal muscle involvement will be there that is pelvic girdle and as well as hip girdle involvement will be there but why not the answer is polymyalgia rheumatica let me tell you that in patients with the polymyalgia rheumatica they will have associated pain along with the stiffness of the involved muscles but here in the patient he doesn't she doesn't complains of any particular pain in the muscles she complains only of weakness she is unable to climb the stairs but in case of polymyalgia rheumatica they will have the presence of the pain in case of the shoulder girdle muscles and as well as the hip girdle muscles and apart from that in these patients with the polymyalgia rheumatica there will be raised esr right the erythrocyte sedimentation rate will be raised in patients with the polymyalgia rheumatica whereas in you take in patients with the polymyositis the esr is usually not raised that is another point which is against your polymyalgia rheumatica right so the one differentiating point here is absence of the pain now you take the other options like kawasaki disease what is kawasaki disease kawasaki disease it is a medium vessel vasculitis and where do you see this very commonly you see this very commonly in case of children and what is the age of our patient she is a 60 year old female and apart from that in these patients with the kawasaki disease the proximal muscle weakness will not be there so that is the reason why kawasaki disease is ruled out and you take the last option that is polyarthritis nodosa and what is polyarthritis nodosa it is also a type of vasculitis which is nothing but the medium vessel vasculitis and in these patients with the polyarthritis nodosa there will be involvement of multiple organs right there will be involvement of multiple organs and the other important feature is in these patients with the polyarthritis nodosa also there is no involvement of your proximal muscles and that is the reason why polyarthritis nodosa is also ruled out so going back to the question and summarizing the question we have 60 year old female patient two months history of lethargy and as well as weakness difficult to climb the stairs and do the housework and on examination there is proximal muscle weakness the answer to this question is polymyositis dermatological manifestations are not there dermatomyositis ruled out pain in the muscles is not there Poly polymyalgia rheumatica is ruled out and proximal muscle involvement will not be there in kawasaki and polyarthritis nodosa so that is the reason why your kawasaki and as well as polyarthritis nodosa is also ruled out so this is the clinical question for today thank you very much and please follow us on this particular daily dose and for more multiple choice questions videos and as well as the notes please download my app that is medicine made easy thank you very much